You would rank up faster if you just stopped grinding mechanics. Yesterday, I did a podcast with two top NA pros, Appjack and Calm, and they even claimed you could get up to SSL without leaving the ground. So today, I'm covering five must-know strategies that you can instantly implement into your rank games after you watch this to rank up without improving your mechanics. By the way, if you're new here, I'm still looking for five intermediate ranked players who want to get that GC or SSL title. If you don't know, I run Rocket League's number one live coaching program where we take gold through champ ranked players up to GC in less than six weeks. So if you want to be one of those five this week and join the now over 2200 that have used this program to rank up, DM me on Discord with the keyword up and we can talk details about coaching. I'll have my Discord first link below and let's get into the strategies. Okay, jumping into the strategies, strategy number one, cornering. Most players in Rocket League completely misunderstand how corners actually work. Most beginner Rocket League players look at the map something like this. Anything on my side of the field is red or dangerous. We don't want that. And anything closer to the other net is green or better, right? Not really. The truth is, the Rocket League map actually looks much more like this. The key thing to notice is, yes, your net is still red. You don't want the ball to be there. But your corners are actually the safest place to have the ball. Why? Well, because no matter where your opponents have the ball in your corner, it's almost impossible to score. Sure, they may be close to your net, but the actual angle that they have to score is really slim. When you look at it this way, you should start to realize that having the ball in your corner isn't so much of a bad thing. Yet the mistake most low-ranked players make is exactly that panicking because they think the ball being in their corner is bad. Instead, what you need to start doing in your games is when your opponent hits the ball into your corner or they start a dribble and are deliberately moving the ball along the sidewall, let them take it to your corner. The idea is not to never challenge them, right? Once they get close to your net, you probably want to challenge. But rather, the idea is simply to wait until they move the ball closer to your net and it's easier for you to challenge. And you'll realize most of the times that you were panicking and challenging, you never had to in the first place. Strategy number two, hurting. This is a little bit of a new one that I developed this season for people in my coaching program, but it basically just follows exactly what we were talking about earlier with corners. Another common situation you'll find yourself in a lot in your games is playing defense around the midfield on an opponent who's dribbling the ball. It can be very tempting on defense to just want to challenge instantly and hope that you win the 50-50. The problem is this leaves things totally up to chance. And if you understand corners, you'll realize there's a better way. You see, when you challenge an opponent who's dribbling at the midfield, any direction they play the ball around you could result in you getting scored on. They could flick it above you, they could flick it to the side, they could take a low 50, whatever it may be. There's so much space to put the ball around you and still score on you after. This is why it's generally not good to challenge. Instead, what I want you to start doing is sort of hurting players most of the time by shadowing their movements and moving with them to try to push them to your corners. By sort of funneling them to your corner, they may just put the ball in your corner, in which case, great, we know how to defend that. Or if they do try to push closer to your net, you buy yourself more time and you shrink the amount of potential potential outplays they could make on you because as they get closer to your net, it's going to become more obvious where they have to shoot to score. Point is, we generally want to avoid full committing at the half field and instead try to push people into our corners or wait until it's better to challenge and it's more obvious where they're going to take the ball. By doing this, you'd be amazed at how many low ranked players will just dump the ball into your corner and playing defense will become so much easier. You're just not getting scored on. Strategy number three drive challenging. If you're on this side of YouTube, you probably know that you shouldn't be flipping into every challenge. But the problem I still see with tons of players is not knowing when to commit and challenge and when to drive challenge. So let's talk about a super common example where you should almost always drive challenge. Situation here is let's say your opponent has the ball at a standstill in their corner and you are approaching them once again in their corner. 
Most low ranked players are so obsessed with getting a center that they're gonna flip into this challenge in the corner, full commit, and just try to bulldoze the person with the ball. The problem is almost every 50-50 outcome that you take in the opponent's corner is going to result with the ball being behind you. So 90% of the time when your opponent has the ball at a standstill in their corner, you should almost always just turn off ball cam and either A, try to drive challenge and demo the opponent on the ball, or B, ignore them entirely and just drive across the net and try to clear the second man or third man who's positioned front post or back post. What you've got to understand is that to get value in the corners, the ball has to come out of the corner. So most of the time, unless you have an obvious beat where you can center the ball, don't worry about playing the ball. Let the opponent hit it back to your team, go take out their defenders and rotate back around to be in a good position for the next play. In that same podcast that I was talking about in the intro, Com and Appjack were talking about how their teams use this play all the time, and it's almost impossible to stop even at the pro levels. So next time you go into your ranked games, specifically when you're in the opponent's corner, that's where I recommend you look for those opportunities to drive challenge. And as you get more experience with that, you'll start to find other parts of the field where you can do it too. Moving on to strategy number four, joining my free Discord. No, that doesn't fit at all. Cut that out. Cut that out. Strategy number four, staying grounded at midfield. Let's say a 50-50 just happened, or for some reason, the ball is high in the air around the middle of the field. In these situations, most low-ranked players will see the ball in the air, not think twice, and instantly jump for it. However, the problem is, even if you're first to the ball in these jump balls, most of the time, the touch you make on a super high ball in the air will just throw away possession and toss the ball into your opponent's corner. Even if you can make a good shot on that, you're probably too far away to score it. Most of the time it's going to be saved and jumping up for these balls just means that you're going to be landing on the other half of the field with little to no boost. Instead, it's almost always better to simply let them boom it to your side. I know it might be scary to just let them hit it, but if you just drive back and cover their shot, what will happen is sure they'll hit the ball to your side, but after that, they'll be landing on your back wall and you can just take the ball for free and dribble it uncontested down the field. This comes back to the whole idea of understanding when something is scary. So if somebody's hitting the ball or booming it away for no reason, at the midfield, let them. As long as you cover the net, you're going to be in such a better position afterward. And you're going to be in all these 1v1 situations where you have both the ball and a 100 boost and your opponent's trying to scramble back and save it with zero. Point is, stay grounded at the midfield. You'll get free goals. Finally, on to strategy number five, we're going to cover something to avoid, which is carrying the ball on your side of the field. At this point, you probably understand that having possession of the ball is good, which yes, is true, but having possession does not equal putting the ball on your car. When I'm coaching intermediate ranked players, especially, this is one of the most common mistakes I see. Because once you get to diamond and champ, you understand that you want to control the ball, but what you've got to understand is that carrying the ball is not the only way to control it. So many champs will put the ball on their car, try to dribble it out in front of their net, and then wonder why they're getting early challenged. Spoiler, it's because the ball is on top of your car and the net is right behind you. Instead, when you get the ball on your side of the field, it's generally better to bounce dribble it until you get to the midfield. And then if you want, you can put the ball on your car and go for a carry or go for a flick. So unless you have really, really good car control and you know you can flick it past the opponent at any point, you're probably better off just bounce dribbling the ball out of your side. And then if the opponent wants to challenge you, you low 50. And once again, they're sitting in your corner and you're probably on a free breakaway. Think twice about putting the ball on your car, especially in front of your net, and I promise you'll see better results. So yes, this is the point in the video where I have to say, obviously situations will vary, and yes, improving your mechanics is also important. If your goal is to get better over the long term, a good balance of improving mechanics and improving game sense will help you rank up. No way around it. But if your goal is to rank up and rank up fast, those are five of the fastest strategies I think you can implement that'll help you rank up the fastest.
If you want more from me, DM me on Discord with the keyword up and we can talk about coaching. Or if you like my free stuff, I actually run the largest free improvement Discord with almost 50,000 members at the time I'm recording this. Plus joining is completely free and you can leave whenever you want. So join there and check it out through the first link below and I'll see you in the next video up here after that. Thanks for watching.